So hi, coaches. Uh, thanks for turning in, uh, tuning into this uh, webinar. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about developing hockey sense in young players. So this is uh, one of the things that uh, I think that sometimes is overlooked. We, we practice a lot of skills. Uh, we work on our stick skills. We work on our skating skills. Uh, but it's also important to work on our thinking skills. And uh, without further ado, I'm going to jump into my, uh, my presentation right away. And uh, we'll get rolling on it. And as I said uh, before, uh, we will have an opportunity afterwards to do uh, some questions and answers. And uh, one of the things too, while we're going along here, is you don't have to worry so much about taking notes uh, in that uh, I'm gonna send out a PDF of this uh, presentation to everybody that signed up for it. Uh, plus you'll get a PDF of all the drills and the small area games that we're gonna show at the end of, uh, near the end of this presentation. So just uh, you relax, you can jot down some stuff if you like, but you're going to get all the information sent to you afterwards. OK, so let's get going. So the first thing I want to talk about is what is hockey sense? And is it something that you're born with or can it be developed? And I really believe that uh, for, for players and of all ages, especially with younger players, this is something that you can de definitely develop and definitely work on. And what is hockey sense? OK, so basically it's just making good decisions. It's understanding what's the, the situation in front of them, reading it correctly and then reacting and making a good decision. That's all hockey sense is. It's just the ability to think the game and make good decisions. And I highly recommend uh, the book by Daniel Coyle called The Talent Code. And he explains in really good detail how people learn and how people remember and how people develop these mental skills. And he talks in his book about the 10,000 hours about 10,000 hours that you have to practice something to really become an expert at it. We heard the story of the Beatles, you know, playing in these little bars in the cellars of, of Germany for many years before they made it big. And uh, so I really highly recommend it that this book uh, by Daniel Coyle, plus I think these are other books that, that I've really enjoyed over time. Uh, this is especially a good one, Hockey Tough by Dr. Saul Miller. Uh, very good about the mental part of the game, de developing the mental part of the game. And uh, this one by Pat Riley really talks about how to build a winning team and a willing, winning organization. So how did Wayne Gretzky become Gretzky? Well, first of all, he didn't do it by skating around pylons all the time. He did it by playing three-on-three -three hockey in his backyard. Everybody knows that story. His dad built him a little rink in the backyard, and he spent hours out there playing with his buddies. And Gretzky, I can imagine the first coaches that he had Gretzky had such a fire in him for the game. And I think it's really important for the first coaches that any young uh, boy or girl has, that they really develop a love of the game, that they just love to go to practice. They love to get on the ice. They love to play the game. And the love versus fear basically means that if they love the game, okay, they're not so much afraid to make mistakes or do things and they work that much harder. If they're afraid, you know, if every time they get back to the bench, they get yelled at or their parents are yelling at them, whatever, that makes them smaller. OK, love makes you bigger. Fear makes you smaller. So let's develop a love of the game and create a positive atmosphere. OK, you have to find a good balance between work ethic and fun. And that's always the challenge and challenge your players. This is the Xbox generation we're talking about. These younger players, they've grown up with video games, constant entertainment, the television, everything else. We have to find ways of coaches of getting the work done, but also keeping it interesting. OK, so let's talk about practice. OK. So what do people, what do players think about when they're in the zone? And you know what I'm talking about by being in the zone is just that everything is falling into place and everything is going really well. So in the practice, we want to have the players think. We want to challenge them to think the game and make good decisions so that when they get into the game, they're just playing. I had the opportunity to, to meet Roger Federer a couple of times. I, I worked in Switzerland for many years. And I asked Roger one time about, you know, his thought process about how he was working and like, you know, what he was thinking about when he was playing his best. And he basically just said he didn't really think too much about it because tennis is such a reactionary sport. But basically he would focus on one shot. He would do that, get into the game, he's just hitting shots, and then we work on the next serve. But it's basically just one shot at a time and just staying in the moment, okay? Not thinking too much, just trusting all the training that you've, you've done and let it go. And then one of the things that's always a big discussion between – the European model versus the North American model. And this is, I'm talking about the practice to game ratio. In that uh, here in North America, uh, 
uh, many times it's one to one, which basically means a lot of young players get one practice in uh, one game a week, or if they're lucky, they'll get two practices, in two games a week. Uh, but generally, you know, the practice to games is not really what it probably should be in Europe who are renowned for developing high skill players. It's two or three or even better uh, to one. We're saying they're going to practice three times the one time that they're going to play. And this is how we develop skills. And I'm talking about uh, physical skills, stick handling, skating, shooting, but also the mental skills is that you when you practice really well, we should be practicing in situations to develop those mental skills. And young players between five and nine years old about how they practice. And I was really impressed. I was able to uh, live and work in Switzerland for many years. So both of my boys grew up in the Swiss system and uh, they played in the uh, grasshoppers and Gateshead and Kusnoff just outside of Zurich. And I was really impressed by how they practice. And I'm just gonna flip over right now to show you a typical practice that these uh, nine-year-olds would, uh, would be doing. And uh, to do that, we're just gonna flip into, uh, into hockey coach vision here for a second. And we're gonna pull up this uh, practice plan. And this would be a typical circuit. So when they set up their practice, they practice five nights a week. They could practice four if they like, and they had one game on the weekends. And the practices were always set up the same. They had a four on four game up top here. They had stick puck actions over here with two goalies and two nets. And down here, they would work on skating. So this would be like a figure skating coach or a power skating coach down below that would work, that would work uh, these different edges, the different edge works they were doing like down on this side. And on the other side, they will work all these kind of cool little stick puck drills where they would work on their shooting, stick handling, deking, that type of thing. And up in the top, if you notice, there are no coaches up there. Okay. There are no coaches up there. They're just playing four on four hockey and having fun. And that's how they learn the game. They learn by playing. And uh, that was always the same. They would change the skating and the stick handling. But there was always four on four hockey. And I thought that was really a, a great way to practice and that they were able to uh, uh, just kind of go ahead and do that the whole time. <clears throat> so jumping back in here again. Okay. So senior players, and we're always talking about the ratio of that you practice, like how much of a practice should be technical, how much should be tactical, how much should be game situation. Because that game situation part is very important because that's where we learn how to think the game. But no matter what age your players are, we have to work our technical skills. And then you build in drills that have a tactical element to it. That's going to be part of your breakout, your zone entries, your low zone offense, your defensive play. You try to put in drills that mimic the game the way that you want to play it. So, again, to encourage the thinking of the game. So drills with built-in option, options make them game-like. OK, you want them you want them to have to think. OK, and then also communicate. This is one of the big things that we really have to force our players to do is to talk out in the eyes. And one of my favorite expressions are loud teams are good teams. The more the team communicates, the better they communicate, the better they are. But put in drills that have options in them that they make them think and insist on the holy trinity of practice, what I call it. You need to have quality. You need to have execution and you need to have speed. So those are the three things for me that are the essentials of putting together a really good practice and having the, the, the players practice with purpose that they're going to come together and they're going to actually improve their physical skills and their mental skills. And the pyramid of success. At the bottom of the pyramid of success, you're going to see form good habits. And basically, what is a habit? A habit is just something that you do without really thinking about it. And this is one of the things that I would post in several dressing rooms that uh, teams that I coach. And this is the pyramid of success that finishes at top with being champions. But at the very bottom of that pyramid, the thing that you work on every day is forming good habits. And then you work through there, play hard, play smart, play as a team, mental toughness, sacrifice, till finally you're going to win. And uh, this is something that you work on every day, but the basis of any good team or any good player is having good habits. And then deep practice. Again, this goes back to the, to the talent code. Uh, by Daniel Quality, he talks about deep practice and practicing with a purpose so that you have to, to improve a skill or a mental skill. You have to, first of all, do it uh, slowly, do it correctly, and then you add speed and you add difficulty as you go along. One of the things that I've used over the years to kind of control my practice, and again, I'll send this to you. This is my three-week cycle plan. And the, basically how this works is that 
on the top, you have uh, the defensive parts of our game. and the bottom, you have the offensive parts of our game. And the idea is to touch each one of these things once every three weeks. Now, as a professional coach, I had a lot of ice time. So I could work on that. Uh, when you're uh, dealing with, with youth teams or high school teams or teams that don't have as much ice time, you really have to be focused and really well organized. And I felt this was really something that helped me stay, that I could look back and see exactly what I've been working on and how much I've worked on it. So again, preparation is everything, coaches. Everything that you do in your practice will carry through to the game. And the biggest influence that we have on, on our, our players is what we do in practice, okay? So next thing, when you're going to practice something, okay, like let's take the power play, for example. You break it down into little pieces. You work those little pieces, the skill sets that's involved, the decision-making that's involved, and then you put it back together again, and then you slowly add pressure. And this is how you build up and you develop a good power play. You have to teach the skills, okay? But then you have to practice the parts and then put it back together and play in a game-like situation. And banjo practice, uh, we don't have time tonight, coaches, but oftentimes I pull out my banjo. And I remember the first lesson I took on the banjo, I mean, I always wanted to really go too fast. And the teacher said, first of all, do it right and then do it fast. And this goes back to what we we're talking about, deep practice, about making sure that we're executing, we're doing, we're doing these movements correctly or the drill correctly. Then we want to add speed and we want to do things at game speed. And small area drills or small area games are really great because little battle drills, because first of all, I like drills where there's winners and non-winners. OK, because that really, you know, jacks up the competition and you have a lot of repetitions in a small time and the small space idea. There's a there's a game they play in South America, a soccer style game called futsal. And basically what it is, it's a soccer game, but it, they play it in a gym. They play it in a very, very small area as compared to a huge soccer field. And what they find is a lot of these futsal players, when they graduate out of that or they move on to, to play like normal type of football, they have enormous ball handling skills because they've learned how to do everything in a very small space. So Chris Chelios, and I love this quote by Chris Chelios when he talks about practicing. He said, anything high pace, drills and games that involve a lot of speed, chaos, and quick decision making. It's about getting these kids to make good, smart decisions quickly with how fast the game is played today. Because hockey is a chaotic game. I mean, once that puck's dropped, it's a pretty free flow game. They have to be able to read the situation and make good decisions. So we want to be able to practice in the same way. And it is a transition game. And basically when I'm talking about transition, one transition chances is I've got the puck, I lose the puck, they get the puck. That's one transition chance. So the question I asked you coaches is how many transition opportunities are you going to have in a game? And I'm talking about Stanley Cup playoffs, world championships, Olympic games. Okay. And those studies, how many times do you think the puck goes back and forth in a game? Well, quite a few. It turns out that it's about 500 or 600 times a game that that puck changes possession. So you're constantly in a state of transition. You're going from offense to defense, defense to offense. And the key, okay, is on defense, you want to think offense. You want to smell those opportunities. And when you're on offense, if you're looking at, you know, situations, all of a sudden you have a 50-50 puck, you better be starting to move, or at least one player or two players have got to be starting to move more into defensive thinking. So, again, this is promoting the thinking of the game. You're constantly in a state of transition, and the faster that you can think the game, the quicker you can transition from defense to offense and offense to defense. And you can only play fast if you can think fast, okay? You have to be able to read the play and even anticipate the play. And this is where I think a player like Gretzky was so far ahead of everybody else because he was thinking the game not just one move ahead or two moves ahead. He could see the game three moves ahead, which means this guy's going to pass to that guy. He's going to pass there. Then I can jump into this area to get the puck. So that's where he would go. And that's thinking like three moves ahead. But you have to be able to practice that. And the more quick decisions that we're forced to make in practice, helps us make better decisions in the games. Okay, so this is all about practicing and thinking the game. Okay, so it's this really going to mimic what we want to do in the games. And for our small area games or our drills, we want to break the game down to its smallest elements. Okay, so that's the one-on-one, -on -one, two on one, two on two, because really that's the game. It's a simple game. As Maurice Richard said, there are two players and only one puck. And it's really just about who wants it more. Okay. Now 
French expression. You can check your French out on this one, coaches. On devient forgeron, en forgeron. So basically what that means is you become a blacksmith by blacksmithing, is that you learn how to do things by doing them. You learn how to play by playing. So this is why it's so important that we have, you know, a third of the practice or more in a scrimmage situation, we have the players thinking the game. And how do people learn? Okay, the cycle of learning. And I think this is important as coaches, we understand for players is how they go about and they learn things. Well, we start out with instruction, okay? They have to show them what to do it. We demonstrate it either by, you know, either by showing them like videos of it or animations of it or demonstrating on the ice. And then lots of participation, lots and lots of participation and then correction. Again, deep practice. We want them to be doing it correctly. So we correct them. We instruct them what we want to do. We demonstrate again the right way to do it. And then lots more participation. And that's how players acquire skills. Now, playing the game, and we're talking about small area games and small ice games. Playing the game reduces areas, increases everybody's intensity. You get more repetitions of game-like situations. And this enhances the reading and decision-making process. And the big thing is it's fun. Everybody loves playing small area games. You've got novice house league players and you've got NHL pros and the, everybody loves to play small area games. And in all those practices, I guarantee you, in those NHL practices, there's a lot of times they're playing a lot of small area games. And playing with the purpose. This goes back to what we were talking before about planning ahead about the things that you want to talk about. And we're going to take a look at some drills in small area games here in a bit. And I want you to think about, as we're going through those, what we're actually working on. Okay, the parts of the game we're working on skill-wise and also thinking wise, okay? So can you see it? Confucius said a picture is worth a thousand words. Well, if a picture is worth a thousand words, video is worth 10,000 words. So when you show somebody something, okay, you have a much better chance of them understanding it than they're just telling them about it, okay? Same thing. So if I can show them uh, some video or I can show them some animations of drills or, or some videos of the drills, they're maybe going to understand that better than writing them out on a whiteboard or a tactic, for example, my forechecking. If I can show them the video of the forechecking, especially us forechecking, uh, they're going to have a better understanding of what's going on out there. And then what do the players need to see? What do they really need to see to be able to play the game? And I'm talking about players that more advanced players. Uh, I'm talking about midget AAA, junior professional players. We talk about video. But you know, you have to build up those mental muscles. And the question I ask is how many times can you show a breakout under pressure until it's too many? I mean, when we're going through and doing our, our videos after the games and we're doing a pre-game pre -game scout and we're showing the other team, you know, we're showing their forecheck, we're showing their breakouts, we're showing their PK, we're showing them the different parts of the games. How much of it can do? Well, I think that you want to, uh, first of all, show positive examples, especially of our team or our players, is that this is what we are going to do. I think too many coaches get hung up on what the other team's doing and they lack, they don't focus as much as on what the, uh, the players need. And the players need to see themselves doing things correctly. This reinforces their thinking process. Again, this helps build up that hockey IQ and challenge your players. If you're doing a video or a meeting or something like that, okay, ask them questions, encourage debate, get a discussion going. Uh, one of the things I'll do uh, when I first take over a team, I'll ask this question. I'll say, who's the smartest Okay, hockey person in this room. Okay, let's say it's let's say it's me. Okay, or let's say it's uh, Joe. I guarantee you that no matter how smart I am, together as a group, we're smarter than I am. And this is a type of mentality that I think is needs to be encouraged, especially when you have older players or professional players that have a lot of experience. Uh, encourage that debate. Sometimes you just want to get through the meeting, uh, but a lot of times you can really learn a lot from your players and what's going on, and develop those mental muscles. You know, repetition builds strength. Like well, oftentimes, you know, when we're building up, you know, these, these big pipes here, we do that by, by lifting weights. We do many repetitions. Well, the mental part of the game is exactly the same thing. We have to do those mental repetitions. They have to be able to see it. They have to be able to dream it. They have to be able to do it, okay? And that being said, okay, one of the things coaches we get caught up is we're giving too much information, especially before games. That's one of the worst times we want to talk about everything when really we should be simplifying. During the week, we can talk about things, but when it gets into before the game, it's basically about your ABCs. And we talk about analysis by paralysis, and this might be me. So this is your typical golfer here. And you see right down, it says 1.5 seconds of thought. 
That's the time it takes till the, basically you start that backswing till you hit that ball. And these are all the possible things that you can think about that can, that can go wrong or that you have to focus on, but you don't think about it. Because you practice it so much, you might make an adjustment. So you hit a thousand balls, you do it just automatically. And then you're just putting the information and I say your ABCs, okay? You just have to focus on two or three things for each part of the game. Okay, breakout. I'm a defenseman going back for the puck. What are my ABCs? Okay, A, shoulder check. Okay, B, get a good angle to the puck. C, pick up the, the puck cleanly with speed and move the puck quickly. Okay, A, B, C. Just one second. And that's, I think you'll, you'll find your players remember things much better. So, and positive talk coaches. Positive examples are always better because the mind doesn't, okay, recognize don't. If I tell you don't think about a white cow, okay, you're automatically thinking about a white cow. It's just the way we work. So whatever you're talking to somebody, you want to teach somebody something, get him thinking the right way, try to use positive examples. Instead of saying, don't pass the puck up the middle, okay, say, pass the puck out by the wall. Okay, let's break out by the wall tonight. And everybody sees that in their mind, they're imagining it, and it's, 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 it's much, much more effective. Okay, and remember, coaches, we started playing this game because it was fun. Okay, and I will leave you with that uh, on this part of it. Because sometimes we get so hung up with what we're doing and we want to get this done. There's so much work to do. It has to be fun. And especially when you're dealing with young players like the 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 year olds, by the time they're 13 and 14, if it's not fun, they're going to be looking for something else to do. So we have to find ways, coaches, of getting that done. So game time. Let's play. So I'm going to show you a few, uh, a few small area games and drills that you'll be able to use. Uh, with your practices and that really promote the thinking part of the game. And again, don't worry about trying to write these down. We're going to send out uh, a PDF. You'll have a PDF of all of these uh, games that will be sent to you uh, for coaches that are on Hockey Coach Vision. If you write to me, I will send you a package with the animations in it that you'll be able to, to, to see those and share those. But you don't have to worry about writing them down. OK, so I'm going to stop this right now. And I'm going to flip back into our uh, Hockey Coach Vision. And we'll just get that one out of the way. And we'll jump right into this first one here. So this first game, so I'm going to show some of these games in 2D and I'll show some in 3D. Uh, this game's called the Anchor Game. And this is a quick transition game. So it works like this. It's a three-on-two game, but it starts three-on-three. Three. You've got a pylon in the middle. That's your anchor. And the coach is going to start by chipping it. The coach chips it. And whatever team gets it is on attack. They're playing three-on-two. The Reds get it. So one blue player has to anchor up on the pylon. And the other, the other players play three on two until they get it back. And then it's quick transition. Now he can release and hit up the ice right away. So if they're quick, they'll get a breakaway or a two on one. This time the D jumps up and they finish with a nice goal. Okay. So again, the thinking part of the game, you're, you're promoting. What are we working on here? Well, first of all, that quick outlet pass up the middle of the ice, quick transition, tough defense, three on two. These are type of the things that we're, we're working on. Okay. Next one. This is called flipper cross ice. And we'll take a look at this one in, uh, in 3D. And what we're going to start, again, I love starting games with a race for the puck. So we're going to start with a race for the puck down low. And we start out as a two-on-two -two game. So, sorry, three-on-two -two game. The whites are on three. The reds are on two. Now when the defenders get it back, they chip it out. And a new guy jumps in. And then we have two new defenders jump in. So the defenders all of a sudden have to transition from defense to offense with two new defenders. Now the white team takes it over and two new red defenders jump in. So this is a quick transition game that's going back and forth all the time. Okay, so it's nonstop. So this game is purely a transition game. And again, taking advantage of those breakaways and those breaks when you get a, a two on one or a three on two. Uh, the next game, and, and as we move along here, coaches, they're going a little bit more tactical a little bit more advanced so this one here is called d jumper okay a three on two d jumper and basically what we're working on here is we want our defensemen to jump into the action and get them used to jumping up and participating in the attack so the way it's set up is you have a defenseman on either side with two forwards okay two forwards on the side and i love this game because it starts out with two defensemen racing for the puck so we're going to chip that puck you have two d racing for the puck and whoever gets it Okay, blue teams on offense, they're playing three on two. Now, the Reds get it back, 
When the Reds get it back, they want to outlet to their forwards who are, who are pinned to the pylons up top. And then one of those defensemen is going to jump up to create the three-on-two. So now we have a three-on-two rush with a D-man trailer, and he makes a great shot. So again, then we change on the whistle, or we change on a goal. So again, this one here, it's about getting your D involved with the, with the attack and quick transition. So these are all quick transition games. Now, we're going more into low zone offense type of games. And this is a great little game uh, for just about any level. And it's a straight two on two game where you chip the puck to the wall and it's straight two on two. And even the goalies can get involved here. They can pass it or even shoot it. But uh, you go, if the puck goes out of play, the coach will either put in a new puck or he'll whistle the change. And it's an automatic change on the goalies. So this is a really great, a really great game to get the intensity going in practice because you're in a small space. You get a lot of bumping and grinding along the wall in front of the net, and it really gets the blood flowing in the players. So now let's move along to a, a, a two-on-two game with a D-man shooter. So now we're working the more specialized types of games where players are more in a power play situation. We have a defenseman up at the top, and we'll watch this one in 3D. I'll just swing around to the, the end here. And you'll see at the start of this, after the race for the puck, that two defensemen are going to post up at the top and the forwards play two on two down low. So we start with a race. Defensemen take their position up top. So the Reds get it. So they're on offense. It has to start always with a pass up to the D. And now they can play three on two as they want. The D can't advance. He has to stay above the circles. So they kick it out. And this time they get a quick pass and a deflection. And that works as well. Again, thinking the game, taking what's, taking what's available. Don't wait to get set up. If you've got a quick chance to get a good scoring chance right away, go for it. So this is all parts of developing the thinking of the game. Okay, so that's uh, two on two with shooters. And then defender. So this is a specialty game. So this is a specialty game. And uh, we'll watch this one actually uh, from the coach's point of view. Okay, now what we have set up here is we have three attackers on either side. Okay, and you have three defenders in the middle. Now, the name of the game here is the puck, whatever side it goes on to, they're trying to pass the puck through the box to the players on the other side to get a point. Every time that the defenders cut off a pass, they get a point, okay? And there always has to be one defender forcing, but only one. If one defender moves out, another defender can move in. So let's start the game. So coach over to this side, okay? So one forcing, they move it along. They're going to beat that guy. There's a shift up here back to the middle, and they get a pass. That's one point. But now they're going to force it right away, and they force a bad pass, and they cut it off, and it's back to the middle again. So, again, this, work, this is working on, on – this is working on – this is working on uh, offensive and defensive skills on special teams, okay? Now, next thing, outriders. This is a pure power play type of play. And we have the outriders, which are the players on the outside that have to stay outside the circles. Okay, and then we have players that are going to play on the inside to create a four on two situation. And once they get into that four on two, then they can rotate into type of a power play setup. So, again, we start with a race for the puck, sprint for it. So now the Reds take over. So they're playing four on two. So quick passing here. There's a one time shot recovery back down the other side. They pass it out to the outliers and now pass through the box. And now they recover. Now they're going to slide. So now they can slide into more of a one, three, one setup, or you can keep those outliers on the outside. Okay. So let's go on to the next game. And sorry, but my dog keeps knocking my uh, plug out of the socket here. So I have to keep going and plug it back in. So this next game, this is a uh, power play game as well. So this is a Panther power play three against one on both sides. So you have a D shooter up top. you got flankers on the outside. And as always, we're going to start with a back off the end and then a race for the puck. So this is going to turn into a three-on-one. So this time the blues get it. So the red is the defender in the middle. So this is where you look at those one-time shots off the side, passes through the box, definitely working on power play skills. Red get it back. They have to kick it up to the defenseman before they can attack the net. And it's just a straight three-on-one game. But this is a really good game for sharpening up those power play skills and then anticipating. What am I going to do with the puck when I get it? Again, promoting thinking of the game. Uh, Red Wings power play. Now we're working three on two. Similar game. Okay, very similar game. But now it's just a three on two situation. So now same thing. You go from offense to defense. So now the Reds have it. So the Blue are defending. 
Now with three on two, so making the pass is a little bit more difficult, but we're still looking for that shot. And then when we go to the other side, then they have to transition back to the other side quickly to a three on two situation on the other side. Okay, so again, adding a little bit more uh, difficulty each time. And, and so making the, the players think a little bit more, challenge them a little bit more. Here's a great transition game. Okay, and we'll watch this. We'll watch this one in, three, in 3D and we'll watch it from the end zone here. So basically it's a two on one game. So we start with a chip to the corner. So we have one red defender moves out against two blue. As soon as that puck comes past the, the, the middle line, a new defender is going to jump in to create a two on two. Okay, so now they're playing two on two. You can see a blue defender move into spot. So as soon as the reds get it, a new puck comes in and they're two on one the other way with, a, again, trailer to make it two on two. So you're always going from defense to quick transition back to offense the other way. So this is really a great game to promote a lot of scoring. Uh, you get a lot of quick chances. A uh, quick transition, you've got back pressure. So you've got to take advantage of that two-on-one when you have the time. So that's Billy's chaser. Really a good, uh, really a nice one. Now, we're getting more into combination drills now. So this is a transition back checking drill, lows on offense drill. So this one starts, okay, we've got five-on-five five down low. You've got the blue players with a puck in the middle of the ice. And you start with the three-on-two down, down, three down low with two up top. So we're going to ring that in around the bottom. And we're going to start by playing a quick three on two or kick it up to the blue line for a shot and then whistle and release. So now the blue players come down. They get a clean three on two for an offensive zone entry and everybody else back checks down to the house. So that ends up as a five on five game down low. And if there's a quick clear, clear that the coach can throw in another puck right away. So just a really good uh, transition game. You work a lot of good things. There's a lot of great uh, one puck drills out there. And now let's work about offensive skills offensive zone skills. And this one, you can might call this the Gretzky game. Uh, this one's called three on two behind the net. Now the rules of this game is players in front, you've got two defenders and two forwards, and you've got one defender behind the net. And the rule are, the rule is, is that if that attacker comes above the red line, we have to have one attacker go below it. So it's constantly a two on two in front and, and uh, with one passer below. So, what you want to have do here, the defenders have to communicate. So now there's a switch. So now they have to switch. They have to switch coverage. And the forwards can try to confuse them by crisscrossing around all over the place. One guy's down, one guy's up. So these are all the kinds of drills that force your players to think the game. Read correctly, communicate, make good decisions. These are the type of drills that you want to have. Okay? And that's another one here. And then uh, we'll, uh, I'll show you one more after this, and we'll open up for some questions. So this drill here, we're going to take a look at this uh, in uh, first person view. And basically, this is a continuous two on one. So it starts off down here. You've got the blue. You've got one red defender here. And you're going to start with a one on one. OK, and then right away, that uh, blue player is going over the other side to get a puck from the other side. And now it becomes a two on one. Now, the key to this one is, is that all players are going to defend twice and then defend once. Sorry, they're going to attack twice, defend once. So that blue player attacked twice, and now he defends. Now he switches out. Now you have another two-on-one coming the other way. So again, a lot of quick transition, a lot of scoring, a lot of decision-making in tight. So you're really working on those little, little quick uh, scoring chances in, in close to the net. So a very, very good uh, uh, drill for working the quick thinking and, and uh, quick reaction. And we'll finish up with this one, coaches. This is called the all-in-one. And basically, it's called the all-in-one because it's all that you need. So you start off with a four check. So the players breaking out have to beat those two players. So this becomes a very game-oriented one. So you try to four check the way you're going to see in your next game. And then they get a, three, a clean three-on-two rush down the ice. They get a chance on the net. And after that chance, coach will chip one behind the players in middle ice. And then the red players have to come back and regroup. And we throw in a new defender. So now it's a five-on-three. And two move blue players will move into position, but passively play defense. So they'll play three on two down low and then finish with a kick out pass high, a D to D, a shot. And if the blue team recovers it, it's a quick pass up the middle for that quick breakaway. And that goes back to that anchor game I was talking to you about, about you recovering those pucks in the middle of the ice. Look for that quick breakaway pass up the middle. So these are all very game oriented uh, types of drills. And they're all very oriented to having the players make quick decisions and get a lot of repetitions about the thinking part of the game uh, during the game. Okay, 
So that's uh, that part of it right now, uh, coaches. So uh, we're going to open up to, uh, to uh, questions uh, right now as well. And uh, if you want to, uh, uh, you can write them down. Or if you just raise your hand, I'll turn on your mic. I can turn on your mic as well. So uh, uh, let's, let's get to it. Uh, actually, I'm going to allow... I'm going to allow a few guys to talk here. Darcy, Scott. Oh, allow it to unmute. Yep. Pass to unmute. So uh, anyways, uh, coaches, if you have any questions, uh, feel free uh, to uh, jump right in there. And uh, again, what I was, I was saying before about uh, you don't have to worry about uh, uh, the uh, – the, as far as writing everything down, because uh, you're going to be able to uh, get the, the PDFs. You're going to be able to get the PDFs of this, and uh, uh, you're also going to get the PDF of the presentation as well as the PDF of the drills and the games I just showed you. And for the coaches out there, if you're on Hockey Coach Vision, uh, that's my email address right there. If you write to me, I'll send you that package. Uh, you can have those, or if you want any information or you want have any questions, uh, about anything that you saw today or uh, about, uh, you know, developing hockey sense of young players, uh, please write to me and uh, I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Is it possible to practice hockey sense at home? Well, I think that, uh, you know, anytime that you're watching the game and you're thinking the game, I mean, there's a, the story goes around about how Gretzky as a, as a young player, as a young boy, he would sit in front of the television set with a great big piece of uh, paper, great big piece of cardboard with a pen. And he would just draw wherever the puck went. That's where he would draw. And he would just kind of tracing to see where the puck was going on the ice all the time. And this is why they're saying that nobody goes behind the net. And that's why they figured out that that's why he started playing behind the net so much because there was nobody checking back there. Uh, but anytime that you're watching the game, and I think this is a big advantage if you work, if you're, you're uh, growing up in a country where you can go to games and watch good players play, or you have the opportunity to watch games on television where you can see hockey played at a very high level, you're learning how to think the game. Okay. Okay. Hi, Larry. Do you think every player can work on his hockey sense in, in the house three or, or, in, or like three on three games? Absolutely. I think three on game, three on three games are great uh, because really that's what the game looks like. Uh, and then you, you can vary that pressure. You can make it three on four games, four on three games. You can do overloads where you start out one against two, two against one. And uh, it is really something that you can, you can develop on because you know, honestly, uh, basically, uh, you know, the, all the, the time, and again, I'm talking about Gretzky a lot, but uh, the time that you players learn how to play the game is they learn it by playing. Okay, so uh, again, the, the players, I know for me as a young player, uh, I was on the ice all the time, like uh, either at my school or out, I lived out in the country. So I always had ice. I always had a pond out there or I was at the rink. Uh, but the, the more repetitions, the more they get to play, and even playing ball hockey. Like we would go to a, like in the town near us on a Sunday afternoon, we get together with, you know, 10 of my friends and we get out on the courts. We had our, our two hockey nets that we made and just playing ball hockey and you're thinking the game. So anything that you can do to promote quick thinking and decision making, I think is good. So I think that's great for now, coaches. So for the coaches that tuned in, thank you very much. I uh, hope you enjoyed it and uh, stay tuned. We'll be coming with more uh, webinars in the future and, uh, Please send us your feedback. Let us know what you think. And uh, to all of you, I wish you all a great hockey season. Work hard. Have fun.